the effort we need to make to bring about this transformation personally within each one of us. And also with that, the change or the transformation we want to see in society. Certainly both are required and we were talking about how one would have to start from oneself, every individual. Because until and unless I myself am centered, I myself am in harmony, how am I going to help anybody else or how am I going to help society transform? So yesterday we had asked this um, point to be reflected on that you can note down for yourself from one to five things that you are doing personally for your personal transformation and the societal transformation. You may or may not be doing both, but whatever it is, if we start noting down these things, um, we may become more aware of them as something that is important for us to do. Anyway, we keep thinking of many things, whatever seems important to us at the time, we think of that. But ultimately, you know, what to think about, what to do outside, if that clarity is not there, then we may end up thinking about many things which are not significant for our happiness. And we may end up doing also many things that are not going to lead to this continuity of happiness that we are searching for. So we are now going to talk about understanding the human being, which we already have done in the five day workshop. And probably we are familiar with all of this from the weekly meetings and the FAQs and so many other things. But very briefly, just to go over this. So when we are talking about what we said was this transformation from animal consciousness to human consciousness, then we, we are having, you know, or we are working towards right understanding within ourselves as the first priority. In that right understanding, what, what we mean by right understanding, like we were saying, was to try to see the harmony or understand the harmony in myself, as a human being, in the family, in the society, and in nature. So all of this around me, you know, that whole existence seems like a very vast thing to try to see the harmony and all of that. So first and foremost, we try to understand the harmony within ourselves. If I have to understand the harmony within myself, I have to start from understanding myself, isn't it? So as a human being, what am I or who am I? So as a human being, this proposal we had put forward that as a human being, I am a coexistence of the self and the body. Myself and this body are coexisting. And this forms me as a human being. Yeah. So three main things that we can see in this slide. We looked at the needs of these two distinct units, the self and the body, the activities and the response of the self and the body. So to be able to see that as a human being, 
to have this clarity that as a human being, I have these two units, right? This one is the unit of consciousness. That is who I am. And the other is the material unit, which is the body. To have that clarity of myself as one unit and this body as another unit. And to be able to see that these are two distinct entities. So if I understand them separately, then I'll be able to see the, the distinctness, the characteristics of these units. So when I'm talking about the self or the consciousness unit, its needs are different from the material unit. Its activities are different. Its responses are different. So I cannot assume the two to be the same or two to be similar or two to have the same kind of needs. And this is very significant because even if you're looking at the needs, say we start with the needs, right? Now the need of the body is for food, for it to grow, to, you know, stay healthy and so on. But if I try to apply it to the self, it doesn't work because the need of the self is something very different. The need of the self is, I want to be happy, right? But when I don't have that clarity, then I mix up the two. I am wanting this happiness, but because I don't know how to work for this happiness and I think I am the body, I am trying to get this happiness through the food, for instance. So that tasty food, I keep eating more and more of it because I think this is only giving me happiness. And to some extent, you know, in small bits and pieces, that pleasure I am getting that of that tasty food, the taste on the tongue, I am feeling happy with that momentarily. But then again, something, you know, some other, something else happens. Say, you know, somebody comes and says something harshly. Now I become unhappy, even though I am eating. Isn't it? From the food. So all this, if I can see now directly within myself, then I can have this clarity that my needs are very different from the needs of the body. And while the body it requires food only from time to time, I want this happiness all the time. So if I'm trying to get it from the food, then I have to keep eating all the time. Not possible. No? So similarly, we can look at, you know, the needs that I have has to do with the feelings, has to do with what kind of feeling I am having at any moment. And these feelings keep changing. I keep changing them. So like just now, Devi Prasanji was mentioning, you know, the situation outside. So when that changes, my feeling changes. So somebody comes and says something harshly, now my feeling has changed, I have become unhappy. But to be able to see this, that my feeling, that, or at least to be able to keep it open, that my feeling within myself can be sustained, I can be happy, if I have the right understanding within myself. So with that right understanding, I can have the right feeling within myself. And I can sustain that feeling within myself, regardless of the situation outside. Now that will make a huge difference because ultimately, if we look at it, you know, what is important to me is my internal state, not the situation outside so much. So if I'm, you know, 
um, in the most beautiful location in the world. But I am feeling lonely, I am feeling sad, I am feeling depressed. Hmm? Am I going to, is, which is more important for me? To be in that wonderful location in sadness or to be happy without that wonderful location? What would be more significant for me? Or what would be something that I would look for? If you can answer this in the chat, would I be looking for a better location, better place, or would I be looking for my happiness within, which would be priority for me? Can you just share this in the chat, the location or my happiness within? <laughs> yes, mostly everybody is talking about happiness within, but there is also one response of happy, to be happy in the better location. Of course, that is what we would, but between the two we are asking, which would be, you know, supposing we didn't have that choice, then which would be better for us? Or what, what would we prefer to be? And we can see that answer is very clear. So to be able to see that this is my priority, this is what I want. But what am I working for? What am I trying for all the time? Because my focus is on the doing, on the activities, on the outside, on the forms, on the expressions. But at the base, what is really significant for me is my feeling. And this feeling, how to keep it right for me, how I can be happy all the time, that will depend on whether I have that understanding or not. How to be in that state, in that feeling, regardless of whatever this situation outside. Meanwhile, for today, um, we can start seeing this for ourselves. Today, in whatever activities I'm doing, try to observe. What is my experience within? Am I happy doing what I'm doing? Or am I unhappy doing what I'm doing? Just try to observe this for as many activities that you're doing today and write it down and we'll take your observations tomorrow. <laughs> 